sold. Well, it was thirty five hundred worth of gems. Does the oh, diamond I... fit in there? I, it's pure I think it's, it's easiest to say not and just say that the diamond is represented by the rich blue diamond and call it good. That's fine with me. Yep. Yeah. All right. However, <coughs> you guys want to do it. Diamond, All right. Diamond. I think my hat is dying. Yep. I've seen better days. <clears throat> okay, so I think after we dump everything, our <clears throat> loot sheet is up to date. I hit all the rows that were sold, or most of the rows. Uh, what about the Scroll of True Resurrection? I thought we were keeping that. Was it, okay. Was that, was that wrong? As long as we made that decision, that's fine. Who knows it's when you might need a True Res. Yeah, I feel like that's something you keep. Okay. None of us can cast it, though. Yeah, but it's cheaper to find somebody to cast a scroll, isn't it, than to have somebody cast a spell? No, other way around. It's cheaper to hire somebody than it is to um, uh, than it is to buy a scroll. But if we're selling the scroll for half, half value, I'm not sure how that works out. And at True Resurrection, we might be able to find a level 13 or 14 cleric who can upcast it, as opposed to having to find a level 17 cleric. Not likely. I want to remind so, you yeah. that around level 12, that's basically world leaders and uh, venture captains and stuff like that. Yep. So There's let's hold on to the scroll. Reach that level. So we'll hold on to the scroll then. It's only a 37 UMD. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but the caster level check is a lot lower. All right. Well, let's keep it for now. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Uh, Anybody see anything else I missed? What about the shield? We're going to sell that, I think. Nobody uses a shield, do they? Uh, no. It's the... that... Go ahead. Sorry. That's the one that we can return to the Jagar family for full price? What's the full price? Uh, double or half price. I don't know. <laughs> so Sorry. I, I'm not sure because I, I don't know what is a plus two. I think, it's a, I think it's on a plus three equivalent or something like that. We also don't know what it's worth to them, which might be more important than anything. I don't even know who they are. I don't know that either. Well, House, House Jagar are a major, major family in uh, Varissa. Sorry, I have no idea if my character would know this, but the player level. Uh, should, should I shut up? Because this is actually probably more player knowledge and character knowledge. Do you have knowledge and ability? Uh, almost certainly a little bit. I do have knowledge plus 10, so 20 take... I, uh, 20 on a take 10. Hmm. You can give basic level knowledge about them, not anything super in-depth from the novels. Okay, well, uh, okay. so the Jagar family is uh, very, very wealthy, very uh, present in Verissia in general. Uh, the head, uh, one of the members is the head of the museum in Corvosa. And hence, a political rival of our current uh, Central European-speaking host. Uh, I have not a clue if they would be around in Magnamar, but I'd be surprised there wouldn't be somebody here who's at least an agent for them. Indeed, they would, they would almost certainly have an agent in every major city of Verizia. Oh, Wait, that one, we said we could sell at full price. So the full Indeed. price on that is 4170. I'm doing that right. Uh, yeah, so you are going to sell it back? Yeah. Okay. So you meet with a, a banking agent who is very clearly a member of the Zarni. I mean, he's got the key as his, like, necklace pin. He's greasy and oily. He's everything the stereotype you would think. And he looks extremely out of place in this high-end banking establishment. And uh, he offers you 5,000 gold pieces for its return. And your <laughs> silence on the matter. I am always know you're doing something wrong when they offer you more than you were about to ask for. But uh, no, yes, we asked for seven. No. <laughs> he, uh, he looks <clears throat> under his desk for a moment and kind of drums his fingers. On something and says, very well. All right, 7,000 gold pieces. I'll just need you to sign this contract real quick. 
How about we knock uh, two thousand off of the contract and we uh, we sell you without a contract? He starts looking from you, Olaf, to speaks with, and he goes, "Do you gentlemen uh, need a moment to get your business in order?" <laughs> Let's at least look at this contract. Okay, you can uh, look it over with you. Oh, so I, so, hold on a second. So, sorry. No, this is a case my character would know bugger all about this. I don't give a damn what knowledge goes with my character sheet. My character would know nothing about contracts. So knowledge, nobility, or knowledge local will happen here. I would know nothing about the... So knowledge, nobility... I, I gotta roll up. Uh, Holy shit. No, I'm, it's... I'm good, Blue. Are you having trouble? Huh. Uh, yeah, twice now it sort of flashed off for five seconds or so. We'll see if it, Ditto. If it continues. Ditto here. Okay, so it's not just me. If I started the call, so if maybe somebody else wants to try it, if it keeps up, we could do that. So a 27 knowledge nobility or a 30 knowledge local? Okay, it's just a really basic NDA with heavy penalties if you break your silence on the matter somewhere around 50,000 gold piece penalty for each person involved if you were to reveal the loss of this artifact from the house of Jaguar vault to the ah. stone giants I, ah okay I got no problems assigning that for the uh, 7,000 I don't either what artifact <laughs> God damn it <laughs> <laughs> so he slides you 7,000 gold pieces and it just like one bag full of 5,000 and then like two bags of 1,000 and he's like you know it was real good not ever meeting you <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what are we doing here anyway? So yeah. we'll I don't remember Olaf has completely forgotten he's just happy he's returned the shield to the rightful family it seems like the good thing to do All right. I want to point out that there's a certain venture captain Jaguar who wanders the earth with his manservant. Yep. I'll get around to those novels one day. He's also in at least some of the adventure paths. He's in a Crimson Throne. You know the uh, the fluff pieces they have. I They're often from his point of view. With Pathfinder it. Society twice. Um, what if we want to buy stuff? That might take a little longer. It depends on the cost of what you're buying and the level that you're looking at. Um, Magnamar, so I believe they have 7th level spellcasting services and purchase level available. But, uh, you know, high level items are fairly extremely rare and they might not have it. I'm just looking for potions of heroism. Oh yeah. I mean... That's basically like eating aspirin for mid-level Pathfinder characters. And there's a lodge here, so... And, uh, you know, a couple got some aches and pains, don a potion of heroism and go stab somebody. And uh, can we buy, say, four Q-Light Wound ones? Yep. Anybody object if we buy four Q-Light Wound ones out of the group pot? Nope, I think that's Fun part of those. orphanages of Magnamar through your purchase of uh, Charity Cure Light Wound Wands. Yeah. We go visit uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt, Auntie Baldwin. She's in Epsilon. Yeah, she's also in Corvo, so I moved her there. She's probably in Magnamar, too. I'm sure somebody's oh, moved in okay. Magnamar. So you just <laughs> move her wherever you want. You, okay, so let's say you meet this dwarf who has ants crawling out of his beard. And he walks up to you crazy like, he's like, there's demons flying in the skies! Wow, <laughs> I'm a beard! I'm in at least two modules! Whoa! And then he walks away. <laughs> what? He's in a very successful module called Dawn of the Scarlet Sun, where he makes an appearance as a fantastic background NPC. Alright. Oh, if you haven't tried it, you should do it with a really super overpowered character. Because it's, it's kind of hard. 
I think it was the no. first module that was designed for six players rather than four. Alright. Yep, you'll die. You'll probably die. <laughs> I've killed lots of people during it. I killed like seven players so far, running it like three times. Of course, when I played it, I was I was rolling with two Zen archers and they one-rounded everything. Uh -huh. So, just to focus up again real quick. Yep. So our total that we have is that 21,000. I think our total is now complete. I think we've taken care of everything. So it looks like we're at 21,090.44 each. And then the 500 platinum, that turns to 5,000, right? I added that to my existing money. I put that on my personal sheet as well. I didn't put it on the party one since he just said everybody got the same thing. Okay, so we add another 5,000 on top of that 21,000. I believe that so. Right? Yep. Okay. As long as everybody does that, then that works. And did you guys include your 7,000 from... Uh... What is a good name for him? The Shield? Yeah. Yeah, I want to call him Ratso. Yeah, the shield's on there. The guy from Jackie Chan Adventures. Don't know. Now I want to make him a permanent NPC. <laughs> Paul's being attacked by a cat. <laughs> oh, my mom got a new kitten this week. I was kind of shocked because uh, when the last cat died, she sold off all of her cat stuff and swore she would never get a cat again. Here we are a year later with a kitten. Yep. Kitten, kittens are irresistibly cute. I don't know about this one. I'm supposed to go meet it soon, but uh, I've seen pictures of it. It looks more menacing. Everyone says it's cute, but I look into its beady little eyes in these pictures, and I see <laughs> darkness in its soul. <laughs> so you say it's a cat. Sounds like a cat, yep. Um, so you said there's seventh level caster services? Yep. So a ring of evasion being caster level seventh might be something. Oh, no. Uh, seventh level spellcasting <laughs> services means that there's someone who's at least level 14 that hangs around the town. Yeah. Is that right? 13? I think so. Doesn't Speaks have a forge ring, though? I mean, not that there's time to forge it, but. He does. I do have I, I do have portraying. That's actually one thing I am going to buy. I'm going to buy all sorts of the whatever the crap you need to actually make things, I'm going to buy. Okay. It's uh, 400 gold pieces to buy a laboratory or a forge. Okay. So uh, I, will buy, I, will, I will buy such a thing. Okay. And then, but then you also have to do you, right to buy to do a ring. You've got to do have half the cost in material components. Yep. I'm assuming right. that's unobtainium and absolutium and stuff like that. Yep, I like unobtainium. All so I'm gonna buy. Love it. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna spend almost all of my money on buying unobtainium. I just want to point out the thing about unobtainium is that it always fits exactly whatever problem you're having. That's why it's so good. No one gets the reference. Okay. I don't. I don't know. Nope. You probably heard of unobtainium from that movie Avatar. It's an engineering yeah. term used to describe a material that would fix whatever problem you're currently having. And you ah. work to combine materials to reach that point. Gotcha. That's why unobtainium is so great. It always does exactly what you want. <laughs> I thought it was some strange alloy of adamantium and mithril. <laughs> oh no, I mean that stuff sucks. I mean if you're gonna make a, a an alloy, you might as well use two sky metals instead of one. Adamantium I've always, I've always and, liked that. Uh, you could you could make a fusion of all seven sky metals and then die of radiation poisoning. So speaks. You're uh you're planning on doing some ring crafting? I certainly want. I certainly want to have the option to do ring crafting or uh, uh, scroll scribing. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to buy some. I'm buying magic ink and uh, papers and parchments and forging a lab and that shit. 
Alright. Uh, how are we handling your crafting? Because I would like that Ring of Evasion at some point. But clearly uh, we can't wait 12 days or however long it would take to make it. So I can craft it. I can craft at half speed, but I can uh, while we're adventuring in the spare time. So I will start doing so. Okay. Then we'll just figure out how long that'll take outside of the game. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Given I have several months worth of uh, miscellaneous magic items, that's a starting character. I perfectly want to do this. Okay. All right. All right, let's sleep. I agree. Okay. You take a nap. You wake up the next day. <laughs> I like that. I like the order of the a way of doing things where uh, no matter what time of day it is, you just say it's time to rest, and it instantly becomes night. <laughs> I have to run to the washroom. I'll be right back. Yep. All right. Or the part where no matter how far you're traveling, there's only one random encounter along the way. <laughs> Mark, with, with charts explaining why that happens. Man, order this stick is fantastic. It is. I wonder if there's a new one. I didn't check today. Although it's futile, I check every day. I haven't. I haven't checked for well over a, a year or two now, and I've been catching up for the last few days. Oh yeah, you're missing out, Dan. So much good stuff has been happening. I, I just got so. I got so tired of not of it not being updated and taking forever. I figure I'll yep. do it this way. Read it, read it once a year. Yeah, Cat does the same thing. I check every day. I just have to have it. I'm like an order of the stick vampire. All right. So. So. Uh... More's a bit of flavor than anything else, but uh, when I when I uh, I do actually make sure that I'm outside as I'm uh, meditating, memorizing my spells in the morning. It's nice to actually be out in the sun in the in the uh, open air for once. And I do not spend the night here in the uh, museum. I go out. Of the, I go out of the town. I'm back. If uh, if there's a large size bed in the museum, Olaf will happily sleep there, away from prying eyes. It's a little conscious of his mm. extra large form. I don't know that they would have a large size bed. I guess maybe they have like two beds pushed together. Okay. For whenever you get drunk in Magnamar and wander back here. I'd be willing to take the uh, minus four, minus four squeezing penalty to fit on a bed for the night. No, they'll just push two kings together. Okay. And they'll stuff some blankets in between. You know, the house staff is used to you coming in. Yeah. Occasionally raging, <laughs> just keep the con score up so you don't die of alcohol poisoning. Well, the good news is when I pass out, I do not lose my uh, rage, so I just I just rage for, you know, a good long what, while. Like four minutes. <laughs> yeah, like I was gonna say, like a good three or four minutes. Yeah. What is it? Six seconds around. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Not 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 too long, unfortunately. <laughs> Three minutes, yep. All right, so you... And I'm good. Down. What are you doing? I think most of us, or many of us, are preparing spells. Yep. That is correct. Which I'm actively doing in real life, too. At least updating my character spells. Sounds good. Uh, does anybody have like a serious penalty to their ride skill? I don't uh, believe I. I don't like where this is going. No, I have a positive check. I'm actually fairly good at riding. I have an entire rank in it. Why don't we hire some horses and ride to Sandpoint? Well, I think we can take... Isn't there a ferry? 
That's what there, it said. there is indeed. Is it yeah. faster? Yes. Okay. We're both port port towns, so we could just pop on the ferry and. The ferry is powered by wishes and steampunk. <laughs> <laughs> Olaf feels extremely uncomfortable in this ferry. It's too much chrome. <laughs> I agree, Olaf. Yes. All right, all right. Ferry time. Anybody got anything they need to do before we ferry it up? Nope. Paul appears to be speaking with the sun. Yelling at the cats. There's noise coming from upstairs. It's disconcerting. All right. Okay. So, uh, Ready, to go. Okay. You take a ferry. It costs you a gold piece, which is a pittance for fine gentlemen such as yourselves. They offer you uh, the customary monocle and top hat that all of the noblemen visiting Sandpoint all wear when they go to the theater. <laughs> I decline. Indeed, there's so much talk about Sir Drak Drakus and the amazing plays put on, inspired by a group of real-life heroes who died a horrible death saving the town of Sandpoint from a dragon stone giant attack. Not you guys, the guys who died before you. Mm-hmm. The last party. Oh, yeah. Well, better to have the stories written about them and them be dead than us be dead and have stories. Yeah, sure, that's one way to look at it. Olaf is not at all bothered by the lack of glory. So you make it to Sandpoint. And from the docks, it is very easy to see what all the hubbub is about. The north end of the barracks has sunk into the earth. You're going to need to zoom out for this one. Oh, there's still all the old tokens and drawings. Let's just get them out of the way real quick. Yep, there was a gigantic fight here. Super huge. Indeed, there was. So right here at this intersection in the middle of town has collapsed. And when you arrive, uh, you find Father Xanthus, who is the spiritual leader of the town, standing next to the sheriff and the mayor. And they're both looking down in the hole, and someone in the crowd says, uh, Are they coming back? And then you hear something like, Oh my god! And then you hear like six or seven voices all crying in horrifying agony. And I need everyone to make a will save. Little okay, so the whole crowd goes nuts, and they all start running away, like with chickens with their heads cut off. They, it seems to be some sort of supernatural fear. You hear this enormous barking noise coming from... You know, it sounds like it's coming from all around you, even though it's obviously emanating from a small tunnel at the bottom of this hole. And the only people left are the sheriff, the father, and the mayor. And the mayor kind of looks sideways toward you guys and gestures for you to come over. I'm missing where we are. Are we actually on this map? I can't see us if we are. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, we're here. We're... Where? If you I zoom in, that. zoom into about thirty percent, and then when he centers the map, I think you'll pop up in the right place. Is it still oh, okay. No, I I'm fine it. now. I think I was zoomed out so far; I couldn't see me. Okay. So, what are you guys doing? So I will casually stroll over to the mayor, that who's not on this map, correct? That's correct. Okay. 
She is in the characters list, however, if you want to look for gotcha. Kendra Deverin. No, I'm just nonchalantly walking over as if there aren't screams coming out of a hole in the ground. So the mayor nods to you and, and kind of puts her hands up between her her sinuses or whatever, and she's just like, Father Xantis, you want to handle this? And he's like, of course! And he claps uh, Olaf on the back and says, we're pleased to hear that you have had recent success. Your employer sent us the good news. Sandpoint owes you a huge debt of thanks for ensuring its safety once again. And while I'd like nothing better than to let you relax and enjoy a well-earned break from your adventures, you've doubtlessly heard about our newest problem. He points and says, Last night, the ground collapsed just north of the garrison here, right in the middle of Tower Street. North wall of the garrison took some damage, and fortunately, while no one was hurt, the sinkhole appeared, uh, that's not the case anymore. Just a few minutes ago, the hemlocks sent into the pit haven't returned yet. And uh, we just heard some horrible screaming right before there were dogs howling. Uh, have you ever heard dogs howling quite like that? Uh, I must say, the chill passed right through me. And he, he, he's asking a question, have you heard dogs like that? You've heard of dogs like that, Blue? I'm sorry, Drin, but you've never actually seen it before. It sounds like it's a yeth hound. Sounds like yeth hounds to me, at least from the stories I read. Oh, David, David, David. <laughs> the sheriff's going to rope the sinkhole here off, and uh, so far nothing's come out of it, but those sounds are growing louder. Whatever's trapped down it. there wants out, and by the sound of it, it isn't too keen on being quite friendly. The sounds all coming from the sinkhole? Yep. Okay, well, let's go. Cool. Yep. I'm going to invoke my flight spell, my overland flight for the day. Okay. Um, do you guys, okay, I could theoretically use all my pearls of power and cast Remove Fear on all of us. Yeah. Don't worry about me. I'm going to fail. I'm going to need a one to fail anyway, and I'm going to still fail in a one. So. Yep. I, I, I'm confident in my bonus while raging. So I will fly into a rage. Okay. And uh, Kendra grabs your arm before you go and she says, wait! Stop raging. <laughs> Drin's <laughs> stepping, uh, stepping away from it a little bit as he flies into a rage. Don't step on me. We have. I don't have to. Wings. We haven't talked about payment yet. Uh, I sort of flutter down and we can Not. offer you 2,000 gold pieces for solving this problem for us. I don't think any... Is, is this a 2,000 gold piece problem? Or is it a 20,000 piece gold piece problem? Would you like to make a diplomacy check? I'm quite sure Olaf does not want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, my diplomacy is plus three. Hey, please, God, tell me plus five is not the best in the group. I've got a plus seven. Yeah. Go for it, man. You seem to be the one who's... <laughs> so, I'm not that worried about the money, though. None of you can get high enough to alter the reward. And the mayor just shakes her head and says, I'd love to offer you more, but Sandpoint's a small town. We don't pull in that much in taxes, and we've pretty much destroyed the town fund trying to rebuild here. I think you saw almost everything in town is either in the process of being rebuilt or already rebuilt. Even with that stone giant fellow you guys set to helping us, there's a material cost. All right. So 2,000 is about the best we can do for you. I know it's a paltry sum for high level folk like y'all, but uh, we're just simple country town folk here in Sandpoint. Oh, shucks. Yes, yeah, Sandpoint, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> All right, uh, Olaf is happy to get to the getting. Let's do it. Two thousand okay. sounds great. Yep. So let's see here. It's gonna take a climb check to get down to the hole. Although it sounds like some of you are flying. Yep. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm going to put up my ablative barrier. And I'm going to trigger a wand and uh, so I can